Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Blog, and today is our final episode of our countdown to CinemaCon, which is on Monday, April 23rd, and we're going to have one more episode after this, uh, before CinemaCon, probably two more episodes. We'll probably talk about the death of Anne Wang in the comics, and then we'll do your comments. I'll, I'll read some of your comments and respond to them. Uh, so if you're out there and you've been watching all the countdown to CinemaCon bios this week, Leave comments, uh, you know, in those comment sections, and I will read some of them on Saturday or tomorrow, I guess, or today if this is going up on Saturday. Um, I will read some of them and respond to them, and we'll make like a nice long video leading up to CinemaCon, which is again April 23rd, and Sony's going to be taking the stage, I think at 6 p.m. or around 6 p.m., and they're going till about 8 p.m. So luckily, I found out my work schedule worked out to where I'll get home around the time the panel starts. So I, I might miss the beginning of it. Uh, hopefully, they stream it online somewhere, or at least the information gets out there quickly, and I will be home and ready to do any kind of reactions or any kind of videos that you guys need me to do. So I'm very excited about that. I'm very excited to be home for this because I thought I was going to miss it. Uh, but on these countdown videos, what I've been doing is a bio, just kind of my take on some of the characters that we know are in the movie. First we did Eddie Brock and you kind of heard my take and my, you know, look at Eddie and some of the earlier stories that, you know, leading up to Lethal Protector. And then I mentioned some of the stuff after, but I can't, you know, make a video you know about Eddie Brock in entirety because obviously that's what this show is I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves because I want to talk about those comics as they happen as we you know get there organically um so that was just like a nice like 15 20 minute video and then I did one on Anne Wang and then I did one on Carlton Drake who was played by Riz Ahmed and now we are going to talk about the Life Foundation the company that Riz Ahmed works for or owns uh, I don't know how they're going to do it in the movie looks like he's a scientist in the movie which Carlton Drake was not in the comics he was like the lead leader and CEO of Life Foundation but he also had partners uh, one of those partners was Roland Trees and Roland Trees had like this you know like kind of this goal of getting gold in San Francisco and he was like trying to you know make money and that kind of stuff uh, Carlton Drake is a little bit more hands-on when it comes to the science stuff he wanted to you know um take chance the uh the the mercenary he wanted to take his armor and use that and create the you know like his own version of protectors to protect his clientele and basically the part of the business he runs is that he's getting funding from all these rich people all these like one percenters out there who want to survive the potential apocalypse coming uh you know obviously there was the cold war around this time when the comics happened uh but they so they were worried about that originally but now like with escalation of superheroes and the way things are going and the world being at you know at risk every single week in marvel comics Comics, uh, these people are like, hey, you know what? We're not crazy. We want to make sure we're safe. And if anything happens, we want to have a bunker. We want to go to it. We want to hibernate ourselves. And uh, and if anything happens in the world, you know, we'll be underground safe. Let everyone tear each other apart. And we're going to, you know, hire or, you know, make or create protectors to guard the doors to make sure nothing comes in and looks for us down there uh, while we're sleeping. And then we'll wake up in like 30, 50 years and, uh, you know, we'll rebuild society. And if this plot sounds familiar to you at all, it's probably because, um, you know, unfortunately for you, uh, uh, that you, like me, went and saw the last Resident Evil movie called Resident Evil The Final Chapter, because that's pretty much what the Umbrella Corporation does, and I am wearing my Umbrella shirt here, uh, just in honor of how I see a parallel between the Life Foundation and uh, the Umbrella Corporation, and the fact that they're both Sony movies is pretty crazy to me. Uh, I think, though, Sony could use that to, to their advantage and market things for the Life Foundation. One of the things I liked that the Resident Evil movies did, I think around the second movie, Apocalypse, when that came out, um, they did umbrella commercials, and they were like, hey, like fake umbrella commercials that went out there, and they're like, hey, you know, go buy our shampoo, the Umbrella Corporation, and, you know, go buy our facial cream, you know, and, you know, the Umbrella Corporation, and that would be cool to see stuff like that to help advertise this movie. And then also I was thinking maybe if they went to Comic-Con or other places or drove around LA or big cities or whatever and took like a like a truck and they were doing like, uh, you know, to promote the movie and they were doing like uh, antidote things. So it was like, hey, we need to scan you and make, you know, we're the Life Foundation and we're just here to scan you to see if you're, uh, you know, if you're a potential candidate for something, you know, like that we're working on, you know, or whatever. And they could, they could kind of play it up like that. And you could have this little, little truck going around, kind of how like when the Transformer movies came out, they had Optimus Prime like driving around to different cities leading up to the movie. Um, I don't know how much that costs marketing wise, uh, but it seems pretty grassroots to me compared to other things that movies spend money on. And I think that would be pretty cool to get a face out there or a name out there for the villain. Because the one thing these movies always suffer on is the villain. So I think Riz Ahmed, I'm hoping he'll do a good job. I like him as an actor. I think he'll do okay with Carlton Drake. But the Life Foundation, I want it to feel like it's a real, you know, a plague on this world, like this, this world that they're building. I want it to feel like it's this false hope, like it's telling everyone 
going, hey, we're out to help you. But Eddie Brock gets to the truth of it and reveals the underbelly of this company. So you know, I want, I would like to see something like that. And it's, it helps paint the picture. Cause when you went in, when I went into Resident Evil Apocalypse, even though I didn't like that movie that much, I went in going like, all right, I know who the Umbrella Corporation is. I hate them. It seems like they make like, you know, shampoo that can turn you into a zombie or something. So that's pretty crazy. That's bad. They're bad people. And, you know, kind of just helps, uh, you know, people kind of buy into the world that you're creating. So, uh, with the Life Foundation though, um, there are a board of directors. You have, like I said, you had uh, at the top, you have uh, Carlton Drake in the comic books, um, but you have Roland Treese who runs like the international side of the company. And then you have um, Orwell Taylor, I believe, and he runs like the military side. And he's the one who Eddie Guard, uh, Eddie Guard, <laughs> Eddie Brock killed his son, who was a guard at the vault, which was one of the first prisons that Eddie Brock was put in after he was defeated the first time uh, with Spider-Man. And so uh, he broke out and fought through the Avengers and fought through people there. But one of the first things he did when he escaped was he killed this guard. And you just thought it was a random guard. And it turned out that kid's name was Hugh Taylor. And now his father, who works for the Life Foundation, has now, you know, he runs their military side. He brings in the jury. And the jury is like, like these five Iron Man looking people that come in and they're you know, decked out in all kind of gear to take down Venom. They're specifically made to like take down Venom. And uh, the five uh, members you have are, actually I have a list here because there's so many names in this episode I'm going to go over, it's going to be hard to remember them all. So you have Orwell Taylor, who's the leader of them, uh, but you also have Bomb Blast, uh, Firearm, Ramshot, Screech, and Sentry. And those are the five original members of the jury that go after uh, Venom. And so, uh, but outside of those guys, uh, the, those three big guys there who kind of run the company, there is a board of directors. There's a Mr. Gabriel, a Mr. McVeigh, uh, a Mr. Pullman, and a Miss Caputo uh, is also one of the board of directors, and Roland Treese, of course. And Roland Treese had a guy named Crane, I think, with a shaved head. And I remember when I first saw pictures of uh, Scott Hayes, I thought, ooh, maybe he's playing Crane, like uh, Roland Treese's you know, right-hand man. But I think they're kind of combining those characters, and they're making Roland Treese a little bit more hands-on, a little bit more of a physical threat. Uh, uh, in the movie. So that's kind of cool, you know, to simplify it that way. Uh, but then there's also a couple agents that work for the team. There's also some scientists, uh, one named Collins and one named Emerson. And they were both mentioned briefly in some issues. I think Collins was like issue 252 or 352 of Amazing Amazing Spider-Man during the, uh, the Tri-Sentinel storyline. And then... Um, and the other one was Emerson, and I think Emerson, they mention Emerson by name in uh, Lethal Protector number four. So uh, in, in those storylines, uh, why I bring that up, I should say, is there were actors on IMDb listed under those names. Now the girl, I'll put her picture up here, she's now listed as producer. Uh, but she was, I think, originally uh, listed as Collins. Uh, so that's pretty interesting to me. So that's a scientist that works for the, uh, you know, the Umbrella Corporation, I almost said, uh, for the Life Foundation. And then Emerson is also a scientist. And there is a, currently an actor listed under that name on the IMDb. And again, we can't always go off the IMDb. It can be edited and all that stuff. But I just found that very interesting. So whoever edited those, if it's not true, they would have had to do some real digging uh, because these two scientists are literally only mentioned one time each. But like I said, the lady who was originally listed as Colin, she's now no longer listed as Colin. She's listed as producer for whatever reason. So I don't know what's going on there. If maybe the person editing those made a mistake, something, I don't know. Uh, but you also have the five symbiotes. So there was five guards that were trained, you know, by the Life Foundation who were like, they were the ones being groomed to be the five symbiotes. So they're super you know, badass people, super trained. You have Leslie, uh, Leslie's last name is Gizneria. Um, you have uh, Raymond Hernandez, Carl Mock, Trevor Cole, and of course, Donna Diego, who is Scream. Um, and so those five human beings, they get turned into symbiotes, uh, the seeds that are taken from Eddie Brock because Carlton Drake, after all those, uh, you know, failures that we talked about in the last episode uh, of, you know, Tri-Sentinel and stealing Chance's armor and mutated humans, uh, after all those failures, he's now turned his attention to Venom and found out and discovered that there are more seeds in him to create more symbiotes like Carnage, but ones that they want to control at the Life Foundation and ones that they think will be perfect to kind of guard, you know, the doors, uh, you know, when they're all the rich people are underground. And again, like I said, that plot is 
is straight up from final uh, from, from the final chapter of the Resident Evil movies. Uh, that's what the Umbrella Corporation does. And although it's a neat concept, it's not one that worked in Resident Evil because none of the five movies before that really seemed to lead organically to that conclusion of, of that being like a, that plan making any kind of sense. Uh, but it could maybe work here. But also keep in mind that may not be the ultimate goal of the Life Foundation in this movie because they are going to mix in Planet of the Symbiotes with this. So we could be talking about an invasion. There could be some kind of invasion at the end of this movie uh, for all we know. So uh, the Life Foundation might have different goals in this film than they did in the comics. Uh, so I hope so because I would hate for two Sony movies in the span of two years to have the same plot for their bad guys. Uh, that would be bad. Um, but, you know, Leslie, she turned into Agony when she got the symbiote. Raymond turned into Lasher. Carl, Phage, uh, Trevor turned into Riot. And Donna, obviously, we talked about turned into Scream. Um, so, yeah, so they have a you know, good group of people on here. They've also hired people like, you know, when they hire the jury, they don't exactly work for the Life Foundation. They're outside contractors that Orwell Taylor kind of, you know, lends to the, uh, the, you know, to the Life Foundation. Uh, but the jury does take assignments other places, and they've been perceived as good guys as well in comics. And remember, some of these guys going after Venom, they're not exactly bad guys either, you know, sometimes, because, uh, well, at least the jury and those guys, uh, they're trained soldiers, are just doing their job. Uh, but, you know, when you got people like Carlton Drake and Tr Roland Treese, those guys are bad people. And obviously, Orwell Taylor, he's not a bad guy either. He's a military man who lost his son, and he wants kind of revenge for his son. So even though he's supposed to bring in Venom alive, he's totally willing to kill him too so i don't know if that character is going to show up in the movie or not uh that would be interesting as well but um yeah i mean that's kind of all the information i have on life foundation there's some pictures hopefully I'll, I'll post them up now if i haven't already posted them that were uh, taken on twitter there was a guy that was like working somewhere in atlanta and they were filming in his building and he posted these pictures online so i hopefully i have those up there so you can kind of see what uh, the you know the corporation is kind of working on and I did make a video on that so I'll put a link down below so you can get a little bit more information on what you know the details we broke down those photos and like read out what each you know photo was about and theorized about which each photo so again I'll put a link down to that episode we did that really early on in the show and you guys can learn more possibly there about what we might see in this movie uh, but so, yeah, what do you think of Life Foundation? Like, they're this survivalist company. They have this, you know, funding from rich people, and their goal is to keep those people safe in case the world ends. And I think that's a very, you know, interesting concept. But like I said, it was kind of used in Resident Evil, the final chapter. Um, and uh, so it would be tough to do it again here like i said just less than two years later in another sony movie but like i said because they're also factoring in uh the the plan of the symbiotes movie maybe there's a different goal maybe there's a different you know avenue that uh, carlton drake is trying to go in maybe he wants to create um alien life forms and merge them with humans maybe he doesn't have a plan of you know saving you know one percenters that paid him maybe he has a different goal so uh, maybe he wants to save humanity and by doing that he thinks by infecting everyone with a symbiote uh would do it because then we wouldn't be you know uh, susceptible Acceptable to disease anymore and we would be free from germs and disease maybe that's something that they're working on like who knows a lot of speculation we can do so let's do it in the comments down below um, let me know what you guys think of the life foundation do you have anything you think i missed let me know that down below too and i will reply to your comments thanks so much for watching my channel like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace